Japanese fencing. Do you know what French fencing is like? This is the Japanese version. And a small plug for Hoyts. If you've yet to see the movie The Last Samurai, if you do, you will see that that is where Kendo came from. As the samurai warriors, the bushi, developed and as the Japanese society developed and modernized it became unacceptable to chop heads off and chop arms off. However the concept, the sense of the feeling and honor of doing uh, sword work was maintained through the modern martial art of kendo which dates about 150 years since the wearing of our armor. So Today we have uh, members of the Hut Kendall Club. We've been in the hut for about three years this May. Uh, Liz and I, however, have been studying Kendall for about 23 years each. And Marty, beside Liz here, has been studying Kendall for about 10 years. He's a second dan black belt. We are fifth level black belts, Liz and I. Um, Scott, the third one, is a first level black belt. He received his grade uh, just in 2003, uh, this time last year. Uh, Dan is EQ, or what would be the equivalent of brown belt? You'll see we don't wear the belt colors, unlike judo and karate. Um, and Nicola is a beginner, and she's also a Q grade. But we all think we're all beginners, even though we have reached a high grade, we're still beginners, we're still learning, and that is part of the philosophy. So together, otogai ni re. Yeah. They're putting on their armour, however the first thing that Liz and I are going to be demonstrating today is the kata. The kata is the dance, dance form, slow form, we're using wooden swords. We don't do contact with wooden swords, but we will show you 10 sets of the kata. This is the great, this 10 sets you need to learn from around third level black belt upwards. And uh, there is always a winner and there's always a loser. I know who moves and we get try and get better and better at using it. So this shows the root movements, the basic movements of how Kendor came to be about. So please enjoy our kata. Thank you. 
short sword, uh, the short sword uh, and the long sword were traditionally used by uh, samurai and that is showing the way that it could have been used when it was sharp. Now what we're going to be demonstrating uh, is the modern version. We now have moved on to the shinai. The shinai are made of bamboo. We can, this is a full contact martial art, in so much that we're wearing about six or eight kilos of armour. This is a hakama. Kogi, a tare, a doll on our body, pote here, and a men, men. This is called a men, which in the word forehead is a Japanese word. So we're going to be demonstrating to you, first of all, a kiri kaishi. This is a warm-up exercise. It's very, we yell a lot. We're going to hear a lot of noise today. So we're going to do a kiri kaishi demonstration. Um, and this is uh, to get our bodies warmed up, our rhythm going, and our ki eye and our spirit high. Hajime! In Japan, it's not uncommon to see men and women in their 70s and 80s still training in Kendo. We hope to be when we're that old. Still doing this. So that is the warm-up exercise. Now we're going to break the, the points down for you and show you the men cut. That is the, the, the strongest cut in the head. So three men cuts. Each. How's your back? A lot of what we're doing here at Mirror is the classes that we do. What we do in the class, we break that down and we teach footwork and how to hold the shinai to beginners before they wear all this. We don't throw people in armor on the first day. This is the desired cut and 
nice straight cut to the head. The next cut we do is to the kote or the wrist. Three cuts, the wrist. Oh. 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 regulations mean that it can no longer be so. <laughs> so we have to settle up with just the hit. Over three million people in Japan practice kendo. Throughout the world, perhaps another half million. It's very, very popular in Japan and in France. Maybe in New Zealand too. <coughs> now we're going to show you a combination technique which is a kote men. So we can show that there are two cuts. For example, if you were fighting and in competition, we do have competition at a national and international level. Uh, this shows if you did miss the kote, you could then do the men. Two step cut. Combination cut. of the cuts, one after the other. 
So we're going to be doing uh, a, a min, dikute, in do, a min, dikute, do. Uchikomi geko. This is to build up our uh, fitness, our concentration, yeah. and our ability to move quickly through the attack uh, spirit. or defensive techniques, blocking techniques. And so Liz is going to demonstrate a few of those. So for example, Marty's going to go for a strike to the men and she is going to deflect the strike, utilize the energy of the strike and strike do. Sunkai. Lots of 
PI. PI or yelling is very important as well. Politeness and respect is also part of it, even though it's not a but if our sword were to get caught up in the person's gear, we would immediately stop. Uh, and make sure that they were safe. If we hurt them in a part of the body that we shouldn't, yeah. it, we would apologise. There's a lot of uh, regi or etiquette, uh, as yeah. was uh, well known in the samurai world. Uh, we try and encompass that. Since then they've developed with men only and women only competitions, but it's not uncommon yeah. in competition to have a gender mix. Yeah. There are advantages for both small people and large people, and older people and younger people. a great stress relief. If you've had a bad day at the office, come along and yell your heart out. Hut Kendall Club trains at Nine Eye College and we study on a Monday and a Wednesday night. We have beginners on a Monday night, or beginners and kihon basic practice. And people, once they start wearing armor, it takes about two hours of training and then come along on a Wednesday. Uninitiated for the practical self-defense aspect, as you can see, we don't kick, we don't punch, we don't uh, do judo-type movements. Um, if kendo is more um, obviously it's still a martial art, it still involves assumption, awareness, everything about how we sit, how we um, hold our armor. For example, when we bow out, we, um, we withdraw the sword, we take five steps back, we're very alert, and only when we drop our sword do we bow. Because whilst we're like this, we're still dangerous. We've still got our finger ready to push our sword out. We can still pull out our sword and cut the head off of our opponent. So as much as we don't do that anymore, we've still encompassed the sense of what it's like to have that pressure, that sense around you, that awareness. And so it's keeping those things there for us, as well as the tradition of uh, Bushido, or the way of the warrior, that's very intriguing, the relationship with Japanese culture, and also fitness and a sense of our psychological well-being and respect for our fellow practitioners and people. We hopefully do kendo to make ourselves a better person. So thank you very much for sharing with us today. And if you have any questions, please ask any of us in the black t-shirts, as well as us wandering around. If you want to have a look at the gear, um, get our pamphlet, and come along, please visit us on a Monday. We have a children's class 
um, for kids from around 7 to 12 starting on February the 18th.